So this is a demo on what's slow in your database and in general what order should you, you be addressing issues uh, or focusing on issues as you do performance tuning. So the three main things to look at are I.O. Uh, in terms of disk I.O. Uh, network and CPU. And I see many people focus on them in this order. So even at development time, uh, rephrasing SQL to avoid calculations or reduce joins or uh, with the, the idea that a join is CPU intensive. Uh, and my contention here, and hopefully this demo will show that you should be looking at things first from a network point of view, then disk I.O. and then CPU. So um, my first part here, I'm going to try to demo some things about the network uh, bandwidth versus disk I.O. So I've got a database that I've set up for demo purposes. And uh, I've got a table, the person table, that uh, I've set up for this demo. This will take about 53 seconds, so I will tell you more about the setup here. So this SQL instance is running as a virtual machine. I have no idea about the storage. My, I assume it's a general purpose SAN. Uh, the data is all made up by me with reasonable data distributions for things like last name. 1.3 million records, about 456 bytes each. I've done a re-index on it so that uh, I am sure about the size. Um, so the total table size is almost 600 megabytes. And I do have some bogus fields in here. Uh, GUI IDs and characters so that I can control the amount of data. And uh, there are no non-clustered indexes, just a clustered index on the primary key, which is an identity field. And it took 52 seconds to get my 1.3 million rows back. So, so what's slow about that? Well, if I were to run this and just get four bytes back from the top record, um, it takes zero seconds. So let's do something in between, which is to get the ID, which is four bytes for every record. So it's 1.3 million. So that will be about five megabytes of data. And it takes four seconds to get that back. Um, uh, let's look at the I.O. So right now, the I.O. is uh, almost 76,000 page I.O.s. And notice they're all showing up as logical. And I've got zero physical reads and zero read-ahead reads. So, um, so this whole table is memory resident. All the pa data pages are in RAM. So let's continue and let's ask for twice the amount of data back for each record. So that's eight bytes for 1.3 million rows. So that's about 10 megabytes. And that takes around five seconds. So what I've done is set up an experiment where I can control the amount of data that's coming back for each record. And what we see is now we have five seconds. And um, notice that some of my experiments here are, uh, I'm not even retrieving the data from the table. I'm just creating data in line uh, for each record and affecting how much data is being pushed across the wire. So even if it's constant here from record to record, I'm still, I still have 100 bytes here that is being pushed across for every record. And we can see that that takes around 16 seconds for each. So I got 17, 18 there. So if I continue with this and I do different amounts of data per record, um, this is the graph that I get. So I put it into Excel. And on the x-axis is the bytes per record. So that's what I'm varying from four uh, bytes all the way up to 460 or so, which is it, 456 bytes. And this is the number of seconds that it takes to get back. And notice that I've got some variance. I've repeated some of the experiments. And what I see is that I have some network latency uh, because this is a shared network. But even in the best case, what I'm seeing is that this is kind of a no-brainer. The more data that I ask to push across the network, the longer it takes. And remember that this is all uh, constant across all of these experiments is that I'm touching every record. I am doing all the I.O. I'm going to do. So I.O. is constant here. And the more uh, data that I ask for, uh, the longer it takes. 
Now you might say, well, uh, hey, you're cheating. You have all your data in memory. So, well, let's, let's try. I'm going to take, um, I'm going to reconfigure my server so that it has only 256 megabytes of RAM. And it'll take a little bit. I'm going to run, uh, run this a couple times here. But it takes a little bit for the server to adjust and give up its RAM. So there I'm, I'm going back and just getting that first one where it's four bytes for each record. And there we go. It took four seconds. So even though I don't have, and, and let's make sure, now I, it says that I have that many logical reads, but notice the other thing is that I have this many physical reads and read-ahead reads. So read-ahead reads are physical reads, uh, but they are done in sequence. So you can think of this as these are being streamed off of disk into RAM and then becoming logical reads. So in effect, between these two items here, uh, almost all of my data has come off of disk for this purpose, and it still only took four seconds for it to come back. So again, in that graph that I showed, I.O. is constant. The network is what is causing, uh, causing this to take uh, more time. So, so in summary, the network is slower than I.O. Right? That's, the that's the bottleneck in this situation, um, even with physical I.O. So um, before I go on, let me reconfigure the server. That's uh, breathing a sigh of relief. Uh, and let's look at disk I.O. versus CPU. So here we go, and this might take a little bit for the server to recover and get some data back in, uh, in memory. There we go, I'm back to just logical reads. So here I'm taking an average. I'm going to continue to take this average so that I only get eight bytes back ever for anything I do here. So um, can I make it worse? Well, what if I were to not just average it, what if I were to l take the weight and divide it by 1.7 and take the logarithm of that weight and then get the average of it? So there we go. I'm going to get 8 bytes back. Again, I'm at 0 seconds. Now, oh, can I make it worse? Now I'm taking the square root. Right, so notice that everything inside of the average function is being done for every 1.3 million weights in the table. Again, I'm at zero seconds. Now I'll add taking the sign, zero seconds. I'm doing some more arithmetic, zero seconds. Taking the uh, doing more arithmetic, multiplying by pi, so I'm finally at one second. So all of these calculations inside of the average are taking place for every 1.3 million records. And just to make sure that, that we're not fooling ourselves, let me run the same thing. Uh, so I'm actually reducing between this query and this query, I'm reducing the calculation in the CPU because I'm not taking the average. Let me see what I get here. So I'm getting doing all this calculation on every weight and notice that I'm back up to five seconds. So it's not the CPU that's taking the extra time, it's the network that's taking the extra time. So you can do tons of calculations and in general not impact speed. And so again in summary you should be focusing on things in this order, network, I.O. and CPU and the relative performance of these items follow in this manner. Um, caveats, of course your mileage may vary and use your own judgment. This is the order in which I do investigations when I'm put into a new situation and uh, again you know many of my clients have this exactly backwards and um, they look at their database server and they say oh the CPU is maxed out on my database server and they don't realize that uh, underlying that is uh, network and IO issues that are showing up as excessive CPU. So I hope that's uh, helpful to everybody 
and I'll have some more videos soon. Thanks. Bye.